ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at MX Linux 21 aka Wildflower. We're going to go through it, we're going to talk about it. Overall, we're going to have fun. So come along with me for the ride. So I have installed MX Linux inside of my virtual machine. Sorry for that, but this is my personal computer. Moving on from that, the moment you log into MX Linux, you are greeted by this screen. So you have your FAQ, your user's manual, your wiki tools, tweaks and panels, your popular apps, and you even have an MX tour. Now, before I go through this tour, I have to say a few words about why MX Linux is so popular, why it's so special. So the thing is, MX Linux is based on Debian. And Debian is as rock solid as it ever is. And it also comes with the XFCE desktop environment. Now, if you don't know about XFCE, it is a very lightweight, stable, and just very resource efficient desktop environment. So it's not going to be as flashy as GNOME, but for people who just need to sit down at their computers, get some work done, this will not come in your way. So without wasting further time, let's jump straight into the tour. So here we have the list of things that we're going to go through. But before, MX Linux, as you can see, is a joint venture between Antics and the people at MX Linux. It's using XFCE, as I said, and it's also based on Debian. So we're going to go to the panel. So as you can see, one of the things that makes MX Linux stand out is this panel on the left. And for people who are more accustomed to Windows, they would probably prefer the panel to be at the bottom. But then if you are one of those guys, then this is your home stretch. All right, so you have your power button on the left. So you can log out, restart, shut down, suspend. We're not going to do that. You have your pinned apps. This is MX Welcome and the tour that we are running right now. And below we have your volume, your Ethernet, your... I'm not sure what this is. Let's click and see. Oh, this is the clipboard. That's very good. Clipboard is always, it's always a fantastic thing to have. This, I'm assuming, is your software. Oh, this is your updater. You also have a button to unmount disks and your battery shows up. And these, I believe, are your workspaces. Very cute. And this is your start menu. I'm not going to click on it, but we are going to be going through it in just a while. This is what basically summarizes what I have just talked about. And then you have a few, a few things written. And then you have a few lines written, which talks about the same thing. And now we're going to go to the start menu, which actually is the beautiful whisker menu. So this actually is also used in another Linux distribution called Linux Lite. I made a video about it. You could check it up in the card right now. And this whisker menu is as functional as you would need it to be. You can increase it. You can decrease it. You can have your favorites, your recently used in all applications under it. And you also have beautifully categorized in accessories, development, games, graphics, internet, multimedia, MX tools, office, settings, and system. So we're going to go through them one by one. Not now, but after we complete the tour, we're going to come back to this. Now let's move on to the taskbar. And the taskbar is nothing but the panel that I already talked about. You can right click, you'll get a few properties. You can, you can change your properties over here. You can change the style and you could expand or you could not do that for the separator. You can also have your panel preferences under here. So you can change the mode, you can have it horizontal. So that goes to the top. You could have it vertical, or you could also have it as your desk bar, which is a bit different from vertical. So yeah, your time is somehow over here, which I'm not a big fan of. Let's keep it at desk bar. And well, the time makes it much more sense right now. And that's okay. Under appearance, we have backgrounds. So, so nothing is used right now. We could go for dark mode, but we're not going to. We're going to stick with light mode for now. We also have items, items. So action buttons, date and time, dock light, taskbar, separator, pulse audio plugin. Because again, this is not using pipe wire. It is using pulse audio because it is based on Debian. We also have the status tray plugin, the power manager plugin, 
And if we double click, we could change some of these things. Let's just not go there. We have our workspace switcher, which I already demonstrated. And we also have our whisker menu. So we're quickly go ahead and close that. And you can go through these if you like. I'm just going to quickly go over these. I'm not gonna make this video too long. If you are interested, you could obviously download and check for yourself. We also have Conky. Now I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to Conky. I've never used it, but one of the things Conky does amazing is you can have widgets like these. And I believe this is my opinion that these make the desktop look so much better when you're just sitting on your computer at the end of the day. A beautiful desktop can put a smile on your face. All right, so moving on to MX Tools, you have a lot of things which can make your life handy. So you have your live USB maker, your snapshots, which is going to take backups of your system. You have your job scheduler, your boot options, your boot repair. You can have your cleanup. So this would be very akin to disk cleanup in Windows. And you also have a fairly big selection of options. So you could have your NVIDIA driver installations, you could download your codecs, you could change your network settings, you could change your system sounds and everything. We are going to go through it. So let's click at the start and let's go to settings. Let's go to settings manager. And so this is where the magic happens. So you have about me, so which is your personal things, you first name, last name, I didn't bother putting it, but you could put it, you could also put your face in there if you want to. You can change your appearance. You could change from Advaita to Advaita Dark. You have a whole bunch of options. Let's go with Numix and see what it looks like. So it's red, it's cool. You can also change the icons from here. You can see you will have to download some of these and you have your fonts. So these are your Noto Sans regular fonts, your Monospace regular. And you also have settings to show images on buttons, images in menus, enable editable accelerators. You could also change your scaling. 1x scaling is perfect for this monitor. So I'm just gonna keep it at that. You also have your brightness assist tray, your clipboard manager that we saw over here. You have your desktop. So you could change your wallpaper. Let's say I want to go for, let's say this one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You could have your menu options. So you could include applications menu on the desktop right click. So if you right click on the desktop, you can see you can create a launcher, you can create URL link, you can create a document, you can open terminal over here. And the thing which this refers to is this application. So you can have all of your applications just with a single right click, which I think is super neat. So moving on, we have your icons. So we can change our icon type, we can change the size, things which pretty much any average computer user would want to do if he wants to customize his desktop. You also have MX Tweak, MX System Sounds, MX Tools. So let's go to MX Tools. And these are the ones that we saw over here. So you could easily install NVIDIA drivers. Like I said, you could configure your bash. You could do a lot of these things. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess around with these too much, but go to each of them one by one, look into them so you could learn more about your system. And we also have a a lot of options over here. You could change your panel preferences like we saw earlier. We have our terminal settings from here. And it's very interesting that we could change the things about the terminal. You could change your fonts. You could change your colors. You could do a lot of things just from here, which is, which is very, very handy. You could change your Bluetooth adapters. You could change your display resolution. You can also control your pulse audio volumes. You could change power profile, color profiles mouse and touchpad, basically all of the things that you might ever need is here. Next up is your MX Welcome. So this is the one that we saw welcoming you to MX Linux. So that's that. And you also have MX Tweaks like we saw. Now for installing apps, you have a very handy little tool. So let's write software and now, if you don't know what Synaptic Package Manager is, it is an advanced but a GUI-based package manager. So basically, a package manager is something which you can use to install applications on your device. But for newer users who don't know 
what Synaptic Package Manager is or who don't want to get into the complexity of it, MX Package Installer is there to make your life way easier. Let's go ahead and let's check it out. We have popular applications. So for audio, let's say you want Audacity. You can go ahead, you could install it. It's that simple. You also have a very good list of applications. You have Spotify for browser, you have Brave, Chromium, Google Chrome, basically any software that you might want to install. This is the place where you could do it. And looking at the list of this, man, I think you are going to be more than happy with the list of software that they provide in this GUI. You also have torrents, you have different themes, Let's check under a server so you could set up a local web server. You have wallpapers so you could download wallpapers of earlier MX Linux versions. You have a ton of options in here. And you can also change your window manager. Damn, how cool is that? Clicking on stable repo, it's going to download the package information and it's going to show you what packages we have installed if we need something to upgrade. But we're not going to do it because this is just for the demonstration purposes of a video. I'm not going to upgrade it and it's also running inside a virtual machine. So yeah, no point in doing that. Test repository, you would not want to mess with this. Debian backports also, if you don't know what these are, don't mess with it. You could go to flat packs and this flat packs helps you to have applications that are more up to date and that are not tied with the version number of your distribution. Now, because this is running on a Debian base, your software might get a bit old. Now, if you open LibreOffice and go to something like Writer, so let's go here. So let's go to about LibreOffice. As you can see, it's 7.0.4.2. It's not the latest. So if you want the latest software, you should go with Flatpaks. And you can see you have a whole list of flat packs over in here. You could basically search your application and you can download it. Another item that I use for video editing is Caden Live. And I always go with the flat pack because again, the version that comes with the distribution is quite old. And I wouldn't want to use something that's very old for something essential like a video editor. And you also have console output and it's grayed out. I can't click it for some reason. So we're not going to bother about it. We're just going to click it and we're going to move ahead. Now, updating apps. Updating apps is very simple. You can full upgrade. So this would basically upgrade all of the apps as well as your system files to the latest versions. And you can also choose between wireframe, classic, pulse, and other things. Okay, so this is MX Snapshot. So MX Snapshot allows you to create a bootable ISO file of your currently running MX Linux installation. So this snapshot is actually not time shift, which is the tab below. So you have two kinds of snapshots, personal snapshot and system snapshot. These are very useful if you want to have a recovery method for your uh, MX Linux installation and if you need something, you could go for it. But the more useful thing, according to me, is time shift. Because with time shift, what you can do is you could set it to back up your entire system on a periodic basis so that, let's say you're a tinkerer, you love messing around with your files and your systems, and inevitably when something breaks, you could easily go back to an earlier snapshot when everything was perfect and bippity boppity, you have a running system. So now you can mess around with your system at ease. There is literally nothing stopping you. And it also mentions that time shift is not a backup tool. So this is only for, well, I'm going to use the term backup because it's only for creating a system image, which is kind of like a backup. But for full system backups, you should use MX Snapshot like it clearly mentions over here. Now you also have some system info. So basically, let's go to start. Let's type quick system info and there we are so oh this is very transparent so let's scroll up and let's see that the kernel that we're using is 5.10 
not the most recent, but fairly recent. If you are, if you are not gaming, this is fairly, fairly good for you. And even if you are gaming, if you are on Nvidia, then your drivers are going to be taken care of by Nvidia. But if you're on AMD or Intel GPUs, I would recommend you upgrade the kernel if you know what you're doing, or just leave it as it is if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Machine is KVM. I'm running in a virtual machine, like I said. CPU, you have that information. And graphics card, you also have those information. You also have your audio and network and drives. And even your partition, sensors, repo. Basically, you get everything from this page. Moving on, you can also get help. So MX Linux is very proud of its user manual, of its forums, of its wiki. And they're even available on Reddit and Facebook. So I think this is a very good way to welcome new users to an operating system ecosystem because the community is very vibrant. And I think if you spend some time, apart from a few bad eggs, which, you know, like every community has, most of the people are good and they are willing to help you understand and grow and mature as a Linux user. So that is fantastic. All right, so now that we're done with the majority of what I wanted to show today, let's go to the Whisker menu and let's show you some of the default applications that come with it. So under Accessories, we have Application Finder, Archive Manager, Bulk Rename, very useful, Catfish File Search, Clipboard Manager, Conkey Manager, Conkey Toggle, and some of the things which I have never heard about. So you have a ton of things. If you know what these are, you can absolutely go sit at your computer and do your job without needing to look things up. You can take screenshots. You can have your sensor values shown, text info, task manager, everything. Let's click on task manager and see what kind of RAM usage we are going to. So it seems like we are using only 995 megabytes, megabytes, sorry, I can't speak, which is very respectable considering modern systems come with 4, 8 to even 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it's really not a huge deal. As for CPU, 5 to 6%, 14, 15, yeah. But then I'm also recording this video from outside my VM on this same computer. So yeah, there's that. You're going to have some numbers come up, which are probably not consistent. I'm not sure. So there goes the task manager. And as for other things, well, these are here for you to explore. Under development, you have Gini. I don't use Gini because I'm not a developer of this line. You also have your icon browser. You have some default games for graphics. You have Lazy Paint, Document Scanner, G Thumb. I wish they included GIMP, but it's only two clicks away, so that's not a huge deal. For internet, you have Firefox, GNOME PPP, dial-up tool. Wow, I feel young. Transmission, Thunderbird, transmission for BitTorrent, and Thunderbird for your mail. Under multimedia, we have a CD ripper, Clementine to play music, an MTP client for music players. That's cool. VLC media player, the one media player to rule it all. You also have MX tools like we saw earlier. Under office, we have LibreOffice. Under settings, all of the settings that we went through, but then, but then these are nicely categorized in here. And under system, you also have ADSL or PPOE configuration. That is very cool. And you also have a few overlaps with the others, like bulk rename, conky toggle. You also have deconf editor, gparted, very handy, saved me many times. You also have htop. Wow, you have htop installed. I'm going to click on it. Now, you see the RAM usage has even fallen down further, so that's... That's a better sign. And with that, I think we are pretty much at the end of this video. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around. If you reached the end of this video, leave a comment. Let me know. I would like to hear about you. All right. So have a great day and we're going to see each other sometime soon. Till then, take it easy. Peace.